Hello and welcome to the three-phase linear brushless motor setup tutorial video. In this video, we will briefly go over how to set up a three-phase brushless linear motor using the Titan controller within a few minutes. By the way, if you are working with a different type of motor, please check out our other tutorials for setting up other motor types, such as a stepper or a rotary brushless or a voice coil motor. We have here a three-phase linear motor with a linear incremental encoder inside. No hall sensor is used on this motor. By the way, Titan must have an incremental encoder input and can run with or without the hall sensor. Also, the hall sensor type must be a digital type. Before getting started, we need to know the magnet pole pitch distance as well as the encoder resolution from the motor supplier. For this particular motor, the magnet pole pitch is 60 millimeters and the encoder resolution is 1 micron. These values will be needed later when we set up the motor. Connect the motor and the encoder to the Titan. Connect the power to the Titan using a 48 volt DC supply. Connect the Titan to the PC using the USB and confirm the communication is working. Open the motor setup window which shows all the current motor information in the Titan. To set up a new motor on the Titan, you can either use a previously determined motor database file or you can use the motor database wizard to create a new motor database file. Select three-phase linear brushless servo motor. Enter the motor name, the voltage, and the max current to use for this motor. In this example, we will name the motor LM60 and enter 48 volts and 3 amps. Next, we will enter the magnet pole pair distance as 60 millimeters. The encoder resolution is 1 micron. Next, let's check if the encoder is working by moving the linear motor manually and seeing the position change. If hall sensors are connected, you can also observe the hall sensor status. But in this case, the motor does not have hall sensors. Click the Next button to go to the next screen. Before we perform the auto detection routine, please make sure the motor does not have any load and is held down or mounted on a stable location. Let's place the motor stage in the middle of the stroke. Note that the linear motor mechanical parameters detection will not be done here, but later in the mechanical tuning page. Select the auto detect sequence button and start the auto detection routine. First, the motor will go into motion to find the encoder direction polarity in respect to the motor phase. Next, the electrical parameter values will be determined, such as the motor constant, resistance, and inductance values. Let's move the motor back manually to the midpoint and proceed with the electrical parameter detection. The electrical parameter detection sequence will run twice, once with a low strength and another one with a higher strength. After successful detection, the motor constant, inductance, and resistance values should be determined. Once the detection is successfully done, go to the next screen and save the motor parameters to a motor database file so that the database can be used again later. Next, open up the tuning window. This process will detect the mechanical parameters, which are the inertia, coulomb, and viscous friction values. Click on the auto detect button and consent to proceed. First, we will need to set up the end of travel positions for safety. Manually move the stage to the negative end and reset the position as zero. Let's also set this as the minus soft limit. Next, move the stage to the positive end and click the set button for the positive limit. Let's place the stage in the middle. Enable the soft limit check option. We will now perform the auto detection routine, so make sure the motor is secure since quick motions will occur. Click the Perform Auto Detection button. The motor will energize and perform short, high acceleration moves in order to calculate the inertia and the two friction parameters. Once the detection sequence is completed, click the Apply button to use the newly found values for the next sequence. 
perform the auto detection sequence again, and apply the values again. Click the Next button to finish the detection routine. We have now determined the motor inertia and the coulomb and viscous friction values very easily within just a few minutes. Next, let's do some quick motion tests. Let's navigate to the test drive panel. Before starting the motion tests, let's set up some monitoring conditions for safety. Let's enable the position error monitoring only and disable the other monitoring. Position error monitoring will check the position error, and if the error value goes above a certain amount for a defined amount of duration, a fault will occur and motor power will be disabled. The default value should be 1,000 encoder counts for 1,000 milliseconds. You can update these with different values in the configuration screen. OK, let's enable the motor using the Enable button. Since hull sensors are not used in this motor, Titan will use phase powering to find and enable the motor. Once the motor is enabled, let's try some preset gains. Try the value of 1. You will feel that the force is loose and compliant. Now let's set it to level 4. You will feel the force becoming more firm. As a default for this test, let's set the preset gain to level 2. Next, let's try to create a position error fault. Push the motor so that the error range is above 1,000 counts for more than one second. The motor should fault and the motor disable. Double-click on the fault indicator to find out what type of fault it is. Clear the fault and enable the motor again to continue with the motion test. Let's try some jogging test. We'll use a speed of 50 millimeters per second and an acceleration of 1,000 millimeters per second squared. Do short jog movements and see the motor moving back and forth. Next, we will test the target moves. On position 1, let's enter a value of 10,000, speed of 150, and acceleration of 1,000. On position 2, let's enter 100,000 for position, 300 for speed, and 2,000 for acceleration. Click Move to position 1 and position 2 and see the linear motor moving back and forth. You can try and test other positions, speed, and acceleration values. Just make sure to be careful when moving since the linear motor has end of travel limits. Also, be careful when using any high speed or acceleration. Alright, I hope you found this tutorial on linear brushless motor setup easy and helpful. Please check out our other tutorials and feel free to contact our support team with any questions. Thank you for watching and happy servoing!